Hello, my name is Robert Tyson Hauser and I'm here once again to present you a new property in Paris, France. So far I've shown you one on the out, outer eastern edge of Paris at Le Pré Saint Gervais. Another one, a lovely house with terraces near the, not far from the Gare du Nord in the central northeastern part of Paris. And now we're going to the opposite side of the city, to the extreme western edge of the city, but still inside the city, uh, near the Bois de Boulogne. Now, a few things you need to know about Paris, uh, like a little bit of history for you, is Paris has always historically evolved towards the west. Why? Because the winds come from the west. Uh, the ocean is just two hours away by car, uh, and the winds have always come from the west, so the wealthy and the affluent have always migrated towards the western side of Paris, and the, historically the poorer part of Paris was always the east. And that's why uh, the revolution, the French Revolution, broke out just east of the Bastille, which at the time was the eastern edge of Paris, and that was the working class and the poor that were frustrated, as you know, and rebelled and created the French Revolution. So um, Paris is made up of two major lungs, uh, two forests, if you will. One on the eastern part of the city, which is uh, the, the Bois de Vincennes, and one on the western part of the city, which is the Bois de Boulogne. So right now we are just next to the Bois de Boulogne, which is absolutely beautiful. This whole area is green and leafy and open, residential, uh, again, it's clean and affluent, and we're at the Porte d'Auteuil aujourd'hui. Now, the Bois de Boulogne is a lovely area uh, for, as is the Bois de Vincennes, and just in defense of the eastern part of the Paris, it's, of Paris, it's been beautifully developed uh, over the last century. The 20th century has seen a, like a, a, a renewal of the eastern part of Paris, and I've li I actually live in the eastern part of Paris, and in the last 20, 20 years, 23 years actually, to be exact, that I've been in my apartment, uh, I've seen the entire area transform and become quite gentrified and lovely. But nonetheless, this side of Paris is still historically considered the nicest part of Paris, the western edge. And so we're right in front of the Bois de Boulogne right now. The Bois de Boulogne is a lovely place to live, as any forest would be, because you have activities that you can do in the forest. Now when I say forest, it's a real forest. In the 19th century, the, the aristocracy and the wealthy used to cruise, so to speak. They would, they would come up on their carriages and horses up the Champs-Élysées, out past the Arc de Triomphe and down in the Bois de Boulogne, do a tour and come back to show off their houses and their, their, their houses, their horses and their carriages and you know, their fineries, etc. So this, I'm not sure of all the history of this forest. It was obviously in private hands at one point. Usually the forests in Paris were usually royal hunting grounds and that very well could have been it. So you have all the, well, here you go. There's a very good example. You've got people running all over here. It's a beautiful place to run, to take long walks, walks with your dogs. There's an equestrian center or two here that are very reputable. Uh, you've got uh, tennis courts, tennis uh, clubs, if you will, nearby. And actually just down the block, just a block from here, you've got the famous French Open that's held every year. You could walk to the French Open. And in front of the apartment I'm about to show you, there's a hippodrome, a smaller hippodrome, the Otay Hippodrome, uh, which is quite lovely. Actually, from the apartment itself, you can bet on the horses if you want. But a little bit more about the Pont d'Auteuil. The Pont d'Auteuil is uh, got excellent transportation. Uh, you've, got the, you've got a metro not far from the apartment, and you've got excellent schools in this area, which Unfortunately, it's often uh, the case with the more affluent areas. They have really good schools, and you're very close to all the bilingual schools uh, around here. You've got ISP, ASP, you've got the International School of Paris, American School of Paris, you've got the École Active Bilingue, which are all private schools, but also the public schools are very reputable in this area. So it's really a lovely place to live. You can do sports, you can be active, you can raise your family in security. It's a very safe area. So, a little bit about the apartment, which I'm very excited to show you. Now, this apartment is amazing. It's 160 square meters, about 1,600 square feet, if you want to make the calculation kind of easily. And it has 110 square meters of rooftop terrace upon it. So, uh, you've got a direct access to your own private terrace, where you have panoramic views of the south and the west of the city. Now, the apartment is uh, in a group of four sister buildings. They're small uh, sister buildings made out of uh, sandstone, the famous sandstone, which is what most of the city is made of. So it's four small sister buildings, only four stories high. This apartment is on the fourth floor, the last floor, therefore, and is, is a corner apartment facing south and west. So from the apartment itself, you have lovely views over the south and west, flooded with light all day long, and all of the windows, almost eight out of ten of the windows in the apartment. So. That's quite a few windows. Uh, eight of the ten windows have Juliet balconies in front of them. So it's just lovely. It's a 1930s building made, built in 1933. 
And like I said, from the 160 square meter uh, living space of the apartment, you can take either a private staircase or an elevator up to the rooftop terrace, 100 square meter, 10 square meters, about 100, 1100 square feet, where you have absolute panoramic views of the south of the, uh, the south of uh, the city and the west of the city. And when you're looking out west, it goes over the treetops, over the Bois de Boulogne and beyond. It goes past the Bois de Boulogne to an area called saint cloud sur all these distant areas. And up here you have the, the business district, which is called La Défense. And you can also see that. So you have a very urban uh, landscape from it. You have just the west, the hills, the forests, the city, and almost no vis-a-vis. -vis. Nobody looking in on you, really. So it's just, it's an absolutely fabulous apartment. I can't wait to show you. It's right back here behind me. This is it right here, actually. If you want to take a little look, you see it's made of the famous uh, blonde uh, sandstone, like I said, uh, the sandstone of Paris. Right up here on the corner is your place. Those are your balconies if you decide that you want to live here. And above that, you've got the rooftop terrace looking out over the city. Panoramic view. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to show you. And so let's just go take a little look. So, so uh, we've just come through the gate of the building and as soon as you get into the private area of the building you've got two wonderful lawns, very nicely tended. Right away you feel a, a gentility in the building which is lovely. And that brings you right into uh, a beautiful Art Deco foyer uh, entrance area for the house, for the apartment building. And then you've got this intercom system here. You go through the door and you've got a concierge right behind it. I mean, it's just really nice. Yeah, you can feel the, the, the elegance of the, of the building. And then right off to the left, you have an elevator, which is a 1930s elevator, obviously updated, so you don't have any worries for safety, but it's very beautiful and elegant, a little iron elevator from the period. So. Okay, so like I said, you have this beautiful vintage uh, 1930s elevator that has nonetheless been updated. It's, fit, it's, it's modern inside, but they kept the old wood paneling. You've got the old structure, it's kind of charming. And that's always the charm of Paris, is finding the old, the, uh, you know, melded with the new as well. And so you've got also very, very it's a very sober building, 1930s, sober uh, art deco doors, wood, heavy wood, security doors. How about this for a nice reception area? Pretty amazing, huh? You've got this beautiful area to receive uh, friends and family, have a drink, have a cocktail. Uh, you've got about uh, 35, 40 uh, square meters here, 30, 350, 400 square feet. And then another, I'd say about 150 for the dining area, which is lovely. And you can just imagine you've got, uh, you know, the, what's really nice about these older apartments is they're set up, first of all, you've got the old features, you've got the, the crown moldings, the moldings around the doors, all original, the doors are 1930s, the door handles are 1930s, the, the flooring is parquet Versailles flooring, which is amazing. Um, as you can see, the owners is, are, are kind of classicists, so uh, uh, they've gone for more of a classic, classic detailing. The, the, they've, they've got a, a fireplace, which is 18th century, basically, or early 19th century, but it is a working fireplace. So can you imagine you have your own apartment in Paris, uh, you're overlooking, and we're going to look at the views in just a minute, but you're ov overlooking the Bois de Boulogne, the Boulogne Forest, open views onto the horizon. Look at this light. It's the end of the day, and it's quiet. It's a wonderful place to come and settle down at the end of the day. It's calm, it's quiet. Uh, if you're not entertaining, it's a wonderful place to entertain. And then at the end of the day, you can come here. It's a little haven. In the, in the winter, you can make a fire. Uh, you've got the setting sun. Uh, you never lack for light. Uh, so, I mean, all that is very, uh, is, you know, got a, lot to, got a lot going for it, right? So now we're gonna go back into the dining area. So this dining area, so you, you receive, oh, well, let me show you the view first. That's the piece, that's the, one of the pièces de résistance. So you've got your cocktail, you come out here, you take a look. Look at that. That's La Défense over there. And then it sweeps all over the, to the west of Paris in the setting sun. And that's the Bois de Boulogne over there. Just gorgeous. 
have a drink, have a cocktail with your friends, or at the end of the day, in the morning you have your coffee. And these little Juliet balconies are in front of every single window, which is wonderful. And then you can have a, do that, and then you can come in and have a wonderful place to receive your guests in the dining room. It's a formal dining room. Again, the same parquet of Versailles uh, flooring. The details, here's the ceilings that they've left them more in the 1930s state, rounded ceilings, which were very popular at the time with nice, nice molding, moldings around the doors. And again, you've got the view of the Hippodrome, the Bois de Boulogne, which is lovely. It's, it, there's enough room to seat, well, here immediately six, but you could get eight, 10, 12. The, if you've got a, got a table that gets larger, you can get 12 in this room comfortably. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner if you're an expat in Paris. Have a wonderful Christmas dinner, birthday dinners. It's a really lovely place to, uh, to bring the family together and friends. So now I'm gonna, after this, I'm gonna take you into the private sleeping quarters, but I just wanted to show you the kitchen very quickly. Again, 1930s doors, beautiful detailing, beautiful 1930s uh, uh, handles, 1930s doors with panels. And you've got the kitchen with a pantry here, large, uh, uh, large uh, place to, if you like to cook, there's plenty of, space, plenty of counter space, plenty of area to cook, uh, lots of storage. But you know, I look at this apartment, it's absolutely moving ready, it's lovely, but if you want to make your own touches to it, if you want to bring an architect in, I think there's a lot of possibilities also to recuperate uh, space. I'm going to show you the sleeping area afterwards. This is very common, like I said, in the old apartments. I, if I haven't said it in this video, I'll, I've said it in others, I'll say it in others. That You've got the sleeping area in the back, uh, that is separate from the reception area, which is very handy. Here we've got the kitchen very close to the dining area, but if you want to take this kitchen out of here, create another room, create a bedroom, you could put, easily put it into the living room room and have an eat-in kitchen into the dining room and then a dining uh, and living area which is another uh, another idea but again you know that's in French they say les goûts et les couleurs tastes and colors you know everybody has their own preferences so you could do what you want but uh, as it is it's a very lovely place it's been very well kept by the current owners good condition um, very well kept building if you said as I've said and now we're gonna go look into the sleeping area very nice all right, so like I said, we're gonna go into the sleeping, the, the more private quarters of the, of the apartment now. And then and like often in Paris apartments, they, they, they break up these two areas so that you have a private wing for sleeping, uh, for the family, and then the front is for entertaining. Before we go into the back quarters, you've got this wonderful elevators that the current owners added. This elevator will take you up to the rooftop terrace, which is lovely, and we'll see that afterwards. But first, let's take a little look at the, at the, uh, the back area. So as soon as you come back here, and the, and the owners have really uh, opted for that in this back uh, private area for a more uh, quiet, intimate area. It's a more family area. This is where you sleep. They've paneled this nicely. They've given you lots of storage. There's storage throughout this apartment. There's a ton of storage here. There's a lot of storage in the back part as well next to the master bedroom. But I wanted to show you here you have a, a, you have a first bathroom with a tub. Again, Juliet balconies everywhere. This, this side of the apartment is facing south, which is wonderful. It's a corner apartment, so you've got, you've got west and south, which is amazing. You've got light all day long, and uh, you know, it's, yeah, the, the apartment's flooded with light all day long, and at the end of the day is where the uh, front of the apartment has the most, uh, most light. So this is the bathroom. You've got a, got a bathroom here. It's a little bit disorderly because it's just a couple living here. Their son's left. Uh, they're a little bit older and they want to go out to the countryside. So, you, you know, it's, a be it's beautifully marbled. You've got a beautiful tub. Again, the whole apartment is very well kept. You know, it's people, it's people that know how to take care of what they have. And that, that, that says a lot for, for the place that you're about to buy, if this indeed is the place you want to buy. And then right after here, so this is kind of a nice little foyer area. If you have guests, you can put their coats in here and then go entertain. And then this is the first bedroom. This is now a guest bedroom. So again, it's not as in, a, in an office and that kind of thing, but this was formerly their, their son's room uh, years ago. And again, Juliet back, back balconies everywhere. Here we're facing the south. Nothing but trees and greenery out of every window. It's just like, you know, again, for a Parisian, this is a huge, huge luxury. You know, it's just a wonderful thing to have. So all these rooms are very quiet, they're intimate, they have nice high ceiling height, we're at about 320, 3 meters 20 uh, in ceiling height, which is lovely. And then we've got hallways going back. 
Now, again, this is what they often did in these Parisian apartments. They made a lot of hallway in this back area. Now, I've seen a lot of renovations done where they recuperate this square meters because some people consider this these square meters lost, but they're not necessarily lost for me. But if you want to recuperate them, I think through an architect you can make uh, you can make rooms bigger, have different entrances, and recuperate these extra square meters. Again, so this goes all the way back. Again, here you've got a guest toilet, which is nice, or a toilet uh, for the, because the other, the other bathroom doesn't have a toilet, so this is a bathroom. We've got stairs going up to the roof terrace, and we'll, we'll see that in just a minute. And then now I wanted to show you the master bedroom. Again, a nice ample sized master bedroom. It's calm, it's quiet, it's facing south, uh, it's beautiful. You know, it's just, it's just, uh, it's a really nice place to retreat. It's far from the rest of the apartment. It's the very back of the apartment. Now, again, now one thing I was thinking of is the owners have put the master bathroom here, but you could as actually make that guest bedroom or that second bedroom much, much larger and make the, the other bathroom and the other bedroom much larger and turn the bedroom facing this way with the, because the, there's a, uh, a large, um, laundry room back here. For me, it's too large by modern standards. Uh, so you could recuperate all this back area and turn it into a master suite if you want. You could recuperate the hall square meters, the, the, um, the laundry room, and make and turn and have the apartment or the apartment, the bed, the master suite facing more this way than this way. For the moment, it faces this way. But it's, they've got a lovely bathroom as it is. It's move-in ready, like I said. You know, it's really lovely. There's mirrors everywhere. So, yeah, so um, take a look. All right. It kind of, it's got this raised area with a sunken tub here, an amazing shower, uh, the double sink, the double vest sink, and again, the Juliet balcony. So it's pretty nice. Lots of storage for linens and towels and that kind of thing. All right, so that's it for the bathroom. Now, it is, it's an interesting bathroom. It's a lovely bathroom. It's got, this is all an architectural element that I think is kind of interesting. So it depends on, on personal taste, whether you want to keep it in this, uh, this way or not. Uh, you've still got more storage here, storage down here. They've left all this hallway space out here for more storage, storage on this side, storage over here. And this is the stair going up to the terrace, which you're going to see in just a minute. Now the last, the last room is back here. It's a very large um, laundry room. It's not really necessarily that I show you. It's probably about uh, 10 square meters, 100 square feet-ish, uh, uh, 80 to 100 square feet. It's a nice sized room. And again, uh, I, I'm wondering if I wouldn't just cut off the whole back of this apartment here, create a master suite, putting the bathroom on this side, looking onto the courtyard, which is nice. And uh, we're, you know, like a parental suite back here and then make a larger room in front for the second bedroom. Just an idea. But again, the, the tour in the apartment itself is going fairly quickly because we've got large, ample rooms. There's not a lot of rooms to show you. It's just very large, ample rooms, which is lovely. And now we're going to take the uh, stairs. This is the original 1930s staircase that went up to the roof terrace. The current owners, like I said, put in the, uh, the elevator. So you've got a choice between the elevator or the staircase. Isn't this amazing? You've got 130 square meters, 1300 square feet of rooftop terrace overlooking the south and the western hills uh, outside Paris. It's just, all this is outside Paris actually. You're on the edge of Paris looking out. It's just so beautiful, you know. There's, here you have the, the, the Bois de Boulogne, you've got the Hippodrome, you've got Vin, the La Défense area over here. But it's just open, it's sky and open, it's absolutely amazing. Again, these, these owners did not suffer from confinement during COVID. They, I think, very much enjoyed it. And you can see this entertaining space. You've got just tons of entertaining space. You've got the, you know, they've got all this room for, for just having cocktails. You can have a full dinner over here at the, tab at the table. You can sunbathe here. Again, these, uh, these uh, chairs are facing south. So you can, uh, you can lay here and just all day long get a tan. You can have quite nice sized parties up here. It's just, this is just a beautiful, beautiful terrace. This is the elevator here, then you've got storage, and then the neighbor over here. So you, you're not really sharing the terrace with many people. You've got four sections, and this is a very nice sized section right here uh, that you have. So it's a beautiful, 
um, Indian summer evening in Paris, in, in September in Paris right now, and I don't want to leave this terrace. It's just absolutely I don't want to leave it. So it'll be up to you to decide whether you want to leave it when you come and visit it. So I hope you'll, you'll contact me soon. You'll have my contact details at the end of this video. It's been a really pleasure, a real pleasure showing you this place. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a lovely area. It's, a, it's unique by this terrace. It's an elegant apartment. It's an elegant area. And I would wish it on anybody that would, might want to raise a family here. Um, or, or, or a young couple that would like to entertain quite a bit and has lots of guests. So let me know, uh, give me a call, send me an email. I look forward to hearing from you and come visit. Thanks.